Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we're going to do some work to the camper. Um, I'm going to be switching out or upgrading the electrical system. Uh, basically the house battery and the way it charges and all that stuff. I'll kind of give you a rundown of what I'm going to be swapping out and give you a look. Basically just upgrading from an old style, not old, but an AGM battery and the solar controller to a new controller um, that can run the solar and also charge off the truck uh, truck's alternator. Uh, and all that stuff will be uh, Renergy. So I'll give you a look at what that is right now. All right, so we're gonna show you what we got going on here. So this is gonna be the new setup. So starting with the Renergy battery, it is a 100 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. So that should double the, the output of my 100 amp hour AGM. Uh, controlling that will be the Renergy 50 amp DC to DC uh, battery with the MPPT for solar. So that will just connect to basically my current solar that I have, which is a Renergy panel already mounted on there. Um, but then I will be running some wires and everything like that to the truck alternator. So while the camper is connected to the truck and the truck is running, it'll also get charged from the truck. I also bought their monitoring uh, little screen here so we can take a look and see what's happening whenever, whenever the battery's hooked up or the system's turned on. And then to connect everything to the truck, I bought some four gauge wire, these giant like Anderson plugs that I'll run outside here and then also be on the truck so I can connect it to the camper whenever the camper's on the truck. I did also purchase this NOCO um, plug. So this will be kind of like my shore power. It's got dual plugs on it. So what I'm thinking I'll do is I'll buy a battery charger that I can basically plug in. So if I'm here in the, in the garage and the camper is just sitting here, I can plug it in since there's no solar or nothing like that will be there, but it'll continue charging and keeping the battery um, up to date. And then also it has a second plug, so it's got two. So if I'm ever at a campsite that has power, I can basically run anything off of normal 110 if I want to. Um, and that's basically like household stuff, like nothing in the camper will run off 110, but if I have anything with me that needs 110, laptop, charger, something like that, I don't have an inverter yet, so that would help with that kind of stuff. And then basically I just got some little odds and ends, so I got some fuse blocks. So I went with like breaker type, so if I ever want to disconnect power to anything on the, the camper from the truck or anything like that, I can just pop the, the breaker. And I also did buy some new RV um, switches here. So I can go in the RV here and I'll, or into the camper and I'll show you. And that's basically to replace these here. So these plugs here currently are what um, controls my outside lights, but those will be replaced. And then moving inside, this will also be coming out. So this cabinet here basically is just a little bit of storage. Um, but it mostly holds basically the wiring right there in the blue C fuse box for those lights outside It does have some USB and 12 volt plug here that I'll be removing and relocating somewhere um, But basically I'm gonna take this Blue C fuse panel here and I'm gonna relocate it down underneath into this space here And then free up some room over there and then basically I'll mount probably those new switches down here somewhere because they're easy to access when the truck when the camper's on the truck and then i need to turn the lights on at night or something like that all right and then so in the battery box i'll show you what i'm kind of replacing in here so this is the current solar controller um it doesn't do lithium i don't believe because usually there's a blue light that says it's down here whenever you're trying to charge lithium so that's why i'm replacing that and also so i can charge from the truck and then this is the older 100 amp hour AGM battery. So I can already tell the Renergy one looks definitely smaller and I know it's definitely gonna be lighter. So we will see um, 
I'm gonna try and mount the new panel there, see if I can fit it. If not, I may have to move it to the other side over here, but we will see. All right, sorry if I'm out of breath, guys. I just removed this battery. This thing is freaking massive, if you can see the difference here. So the one on the right is the 100 amp hour AGM, and the left is the Renji <sighs> Lithium. And I would say, as far as weight goes, I can definitely see why um, people swap them out. I mean, this one, I can easily lift it, no problem, one hand. This thing, I can't even move it. It is probably like 80 pounds over 15 pounds, maybe 20 pounds for the for the lithium. So it's definitely gonna free up some weight and free up some space because of the size difference. Lithium battery in, swapped out the AGM, and I got the new Renogy uh, DC to DC and MPPT uh, controller also all wired in. Uh, just missing some odds and ends here now, but I'm pretty close to being done wiring this all up I do have some wires over here. That's what's gonna run out to the truck and connect into an Anderson plug so I can Charge through the alternator when the camper is hooked up So what I got was the Renogy smart lithium battery and Of course the lithium or the Renogy 50 amp uh, DC to DC with MPPT and then I also did buy this little um, monitor, but it only shows really like, so it shows like what the battery is, the state is, the charge is on the right, um, how many amps or how many, um, yeah, like how many amps are gonna be charging into it from solar and how much will be uh, coming into it from the truck. But that's all the info it really gets. So I may return this and just buy the Bluetooth module um, I think it gives you a little bit more information. All right, guys. So I thought give you another update here. Pretty much almost done here. Uh, so I removed that cabinet that was here and all the wiring that was behind it. I have it run through this wire cover that you use to hide wires like in your office or in your house for like TVs and stuff like that. Not sure what I'll do with the top there because it's still kind of exposed where the ground is coming out. But I'll figure something out. Um, I think once I do the kitchen cabinet it'll cover that area anyway and so I basically move the fuse panel the Lucy down here and so you can't really see it unless you're actually bending down here um, but I did my best to hide like all the wires and everything like that and make it look clean and then I did replace the switches with the regular RV switches those are for the amber lights outside and the white light outside and then I do have the shore power 110 volt um, plugs running through here. I did order a NOCO 10 amp charger. So when I am here at home or somewhere that has 110, um, it'll plug straight into one of those that's going outside and I'm gonna run it through here and then into where the battery's at. And that'll just keep it topped off when I'm at home or if I'm at a campground somewhere that has power. Um, I'll use it there So I'm gonna finish up here. I'm gonna remount the fridge here and then wire it in and Then after that, I'll give you a quick rundown of everything that I that I replaced and that I um, switched up on the On the wiring okay, so I guess I'll finish up this video with for the battery system. I'm actually out camping now It took me about two weekends to complete the whole project just because I was waiting for odds and ends parts and stuff like that so um, I'll just go ahead and show you pretty much everything that I have set up now and That'll be the Renogy battery upgrade. So let me show you. Let me flip the camera around. Hang on one sec All right, so inside the battery compartment we got the Renogy um, DC to DC with MPPT mounted up. We got the Renogy smart battery in here I did end up buying the Bluetooth controller just because it gives you a little bit more information um, I haven't sent this one back yet uh, This one basically just gives you Few little things so on the top left there just shows solar's in house battery is at 13.3 starter batteries at 12.9 volts um gives you like a battery gauge there but i don't really like that one um but i got everything mounted up i got a fuse block against the wall here that is a like a breaker so i can basically pop it and then it'll cut off all service going to the house battery and i did end up buying 
the Noco uh, 10 amp charger for when I'm at home. I can plug it in and make sure the battery stays topped off and charged. And then on here, so right now you can see blue is for lithium, house battery is connected, solar is on. This is your alternator. This one will be solid once the truck is on and running. Right now, the slow blinking actually means that the solar is actually topping off the starter battery, which is pretty cool. And then I still got the switch um, that also controls power going to the house. And then let me show you underneath the cabinet where I installed the, the new fuse block and all that stuff. All right, so under here I have the Blue Sea uh, fuse block. I was gonna make like a little panel here that kind of folds up to kind of hide everything, but you can't really see it, especially when I have my stuff in here and I'm packed up for camping. But basically this is the wire, uh, the NOCO plug that runs from the outside for shore power. Inside, this one plugs into the charger when I'm at home. And then this one, if I'm ever at, like, at a campsite or anything like that that has 110 power, uh, basically just got a, uh, a wire strip, a uh, plug strip, so I can plug any kind of household products in that I really would need. Um, and then I'm going to throw in some B-roll of what the, the big Anderson plugs look like that connect to the uh, from the camper into the truck. And then I'll go and show you the truck wiring into the, into the truck battery. All right, and then so here's how it's wired into the truck. So another breaker, so I can turn off power if I want to. Basically when the camper's not plugged in when it's off, just so I know there's no power running to the back of the truck. And then the power wire is just ran to the, to the truck um, power and also the truck ground. And then I have it just running down, all wire loomed. And then to the back of the truck, inside the bed. And that's pretty much it. So the whole setup really didn't take me that long. Again, I was waiting for little things like this, um, more cable to be able to run from the starter battery back to the to the bed. So if I had all the parts and everything, I probably could have had it done in one weekend, but definitely a good upgrade over the AGM battery. Um, while I've been driving and camping this weekend, the battery hasn't really fallen below 90%. And that was only when it was kind of dark out last night uh the solar wasn't getting any charge and pretty much just overnight um battery draw but i think still i i don't think below i don't think it fell below like 93 percent. i don't think um but yeah so that's the renogy upgrade very happy with it so far and that's pretty much it for the battery system so i will be doing some other projects to the inside like a kitchen countertop with sink with a sink and stuff like that but that's gonna be for a future date